the subject today is Abba Father. Uh, because we, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. We must understand, every Christian must walk in complete knowledge and understanding of the Godhead. So we must understand the Godhead has the R three, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I believe there's a time I preached in depth of God the Son has a beloved, knowing God has your beloved, and falling in love with Jesus Christ. And today I want to talk about God the Father, Abba Father, amen. And let us turn to the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 15, because the foundations must be laid properly. We must understand you know, I've noticed we, we have a lot of knowledge. We know, but we do not understand. So Romans chapter 8, from verse 15, you'll find it says, For if you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, so check hallelujah. Um, this mic keeps going on and off. Okay, whereby we cry, Abba, we cry, Abba, our oh, Father. So it's talking about we are adopted. I remember Pastor Solomon one time getting in depth of the adoption. You know the way you can adopt a child, and. They just look different from you. For example, if today I was to adopt a child and I adopt a pure African child and you see me and Pastor Solomon uh, walking together, you see our other children looking mixed, they're kind of brown, curly hair. But then now you see this adopted child just standing out, you know. You just see, they just look African, you know. Uh, I keep walking around with my niece, with my children, and every time people keep telling me, Whose other brown children are these? Because the only one who is yours is this black one, you know? <laughs> and so people try to associate you with who you look like. But good thing with the adoption of, of God, he adopts you, and then you become now his blood, his family, and you look like him. So you are an adopted child who becomes his blood. Let me get another mic. Check, check, check. Amen. Uh, so, uh, Sunday school will kill you. Please lower it down. So, we must understand first how, where we come into this adoption. This adoption where we be, like, like I said, we must lay the foundations. We must understand why we call him God the Father. Why he became a father. Because now he has taken you to be his child. Now he has saved you. We come to Galatians. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. So I can further Galatians 3, 26. Our technical team, if you can help me move faster because time is not on our side. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. Galatians 3.26. If you're there, say amen. Amen. Technical team, I'm waiting on you. Okay. It says, For ye are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 27. 20. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's continue. 28. There is neither Jew, no Greek. Now this is you. There's, there are no Jews. There's no Greek. There's neither bond. There's no free. There's neither male. There's no female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. So akuna male, female, oh, born and sons, not daughters. We are all one. There's no Greek. There's no Jew because of what? By faith, the faith you had to come into Christ Jesus, the faith that you had to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, has now brought you into this family where we are saying God has adopted you. Now you have been adopted and you have become a child of God. You've come out looking like the image of God. That's why as disciples of Christ, we must look like God. When people see us, they must tell the difference between you and the world. They must be able to see this is a child of God. 
Yesterday in the ladies' conference, we were talking about dressing. You have to look different. We can, these days, you enter on the pulpits and you see ladies dressed and you wonder, did I enter a club? Or oh, you put a song on YouTube and you wonder, wait, was that secular? Was it, is this gospel? Is it? We are, we are too much. We are too much. The, the lines have become blurry. Oh, you oh, a gospel musician? Oh, you oh, a secular? See, I'm not understanding because the lines have become blurry. But when we become part of the family of God, when we come and we become engrafted into his family and we become his workmanship, then God begins to work on us as a father. And the first thing we'll come to realize is number one, you are loved. God the Father loves you. Now, I said we have head knowledge, but we do not have the understanding of this love. So first of all, you've gotten to know you are his family. You are a child. You must look exactly like your father because God has adopted you, not just to stand out. You are there. You are a Jew. You are a Greek. You are a bond. You are free. There's one, you know, in the old times, that's why when Christ went to the world, they're like, hey, this Samaritan woman, why are you talking to her? As Jew, we don't talk to her. Huh? Those things were there. But as we've seen in Galatians, there's neither male, there's no female. Women used to be told, can you go? We shall not have a woman to talk. Why are you talking? Keep quiet, uko. But look at this scripture. There's neither male, no female. You are what? One in Christ Jesus. We are one. And so now, we have come into the family. So, as we come now, we must understand that God loves us. <laughs> For God, we, we recite this. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16. That he gave his only son, that whosoever beloved him shall. For God so loved the world. So he loved you no matter what. No matter what. Unconditional love. God himself is what? Love. You know, most of most people have realized, have grown up in environments that did not have love. So they do not know how to accept love or do not know how to understand love because the environment around was not full of love. And most of our, us as Africans, we do not know how to love. We just grow up living, 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 living. I remember when I was talking about Christ the Beloved, I talked about where we see a father a father figure in an African house is the most scary man on earth. <laughs> Amen, fathers. Happy Father's Day. Huh? If your father says something, wait, wait, and you go against it, you just come trembling. You are trembling. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Because we have not understood now. This, we, we have put a father and fear together. And we've brought that to understanding God. Now we see God is so fearful. Yet God is love. He's love. Love. We must understand love. Us as Africans must understand love. From a father perspective. Which I'm just laying the foundation because the next one, if you do not understand love, you'll not understand what God does in the next point. So when we understand God's love, we understand when he loves us, he wants to provide for us. When we understand he loves us, you'll understand that he wants to protect you. Have you, have you seen a father? He wants to protect. He wants to provide. A father always, a father in Christ. I'm not talking about a drunkard father out there. A father in Christ. They're always... We are a picture of what's in heaven. We are a picture. What we see here on earth is what is on heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. So God always is always looking down on you and seeing you with love. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 8. Uh, open for me Zechariah chapter 2 verse 8. It says, He that toucheth you. Mm. Zechariah 2.8, yes. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the revelings of Ammon, whereby they have reproached to my people. Mm -hmm. So my people, these are God's people. Zechariah, not Zephaniah. Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 8. It says, he that toucheth you, toucheth the apple 
Aha. Uh -huh. Do you see there? But verse part B. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. Ah, huh? the apple. Do you know the apple of the eye? The center of the eye. So that is God. God's love towards you is so mag magnificent. We come and say, oh, behold what manner of love that God has given us. First John chapter 3. What manner of love that the Father has given unto us that we should be called the sons of God. Behold what manner of love that we cannot fathom. How deep, how wide, how great is this love that we have of God towards us. So God the Father loves you. Believe it. We need to start believing it. That no matter what you are doing, God loves you. No matter what you're going through, God loves you. No matter what, God what? Loves you. Which brings me to my second point. Hebrews. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 6. Ah, now it gets complicated because now we've moved from the foundations of I love you so much. Like Hebrews chapter 12 verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Now, in simple English, it says, For whom the Lord loveth, he beats you like he spanks you like a child. And I could chopper. He's chasteneth. The word there is to chasten. Do you know what it means to chasten? You're spanking somebody. Chastening is painful. If God loves you, does what? He chastens you. My first someone as a pastor in our 17 was a person who the Lord chastens. <laughs> when God, when we go through the chastening of the Lord, it is painful. I am a parent and I love my children. But I spank my children. Kibok muiko. Muiko in my house is used very nicely. Uh, to, the to the dismay of my husband, Pastor Saul, who doesn't believe in Muiko. <laughs> Muiko, slippers, African mothers, hallelujah. These things, we must do what? We must use them. Because you spare the road, spoil the child. Because I love you so much, you answered me back, I will. Because you grow up like that, you will become a menace to society. Society will hate you. I love you so much. I need society to know, to love you also. But these days we have modern parenting. Do you, uh, do you know about modern parenting, Pastor Rika? Where do not tell a child no. Do not tell a child. Do not spank a child. If a child is, yeah, they're making, they're just expressing their feelings. They're just expressing their needs in a way you're not understanding as a parent. And so we have children, like we were taught yesterday, who have become terrorists. Terrorists, Kwanyumba, terrorists everywhere. We can get a supermarket. Uh, my Thandi, she likes doing this. She'll enter the supermarket and she's very happy, very nice. Ah, mommy, me, I'm okay. Nah. Until she sees something she wants and she'll roll in the supermarket. And I stand there. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. And roll in and scream in. Hey, Moscovy! And then the no threat works on her. I will spank you. Nothing. I will. I will. Now this one. The other day I was in California. It was slippers. It was slippers. I didn't even watu. Because there are some manners and indiscipline that is not allowed. Now, why does God chasten us? You see, in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 8, it says, But if ye be without chastisement, if you, you as a Christian, if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So if God doesn't chapa you, you become a bastard. A bastard is somebody without a father. So God stops becoming your father. If he does not do what? If, uh, if you don't receive chastisement, you become bastards. Verse 9, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Our fathers corrected us, and we still reverence them. How many have ever been spanked by their father? Imagine me, I've never, my father has never, I think, imagine, Bishop died 82 years, he never spanked me. <laughs> I think I was the eighth born, alimalizia kuspank watu kombele. 
By the first born, second born, third born, fourth born, fifth born, sixth, by the eighth born, he was tired. <laughs> like, I'm just done. <laughs> oh, either I was a very good child, which I believe I was a very good <laughs> Ah, those ones used to, you know, Pastor John, the ones used to be spanked, not me. Father, we gave them rest. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and life? For the verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, aha, Listen, why God chapters us? Why God chastises us? For our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. That we might be partakers of what? His holiness. There's a, if you have not reached a certain level of holiness in your life, you're going to go to, through some chastisement. You're going to go through some proper chastisement. You're going to go through some proper beating. If it is money you're not holy about, if you're not faithful in your tithes and offering, you're going to go through some chastisement until the day you get 100, you'll be faithful with it. Utatoa your ten bob. If you are not faithful in it, you will go through chastisement. So that God may present you holy. That you may be holy. When I was in high school, I was very, very, do you know proud? Proud. Because of beauty. Wait, I went to college. I went through some proper chastisement. Do you know proper chastisement? Because in high school, Every boy is an akukatia. Me, Valentine. Ah, oh, Valentine used to be a wonderful day. Because you're just getting gifts from almost 10 boys. This one chocolate, this one perfume. This one. Hey! Wait, I went to Bible school. Not a single boy asked me out. My entire three years of Bible school. Ay, 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 ay. I felt like the ugliest duckling in that college. The whole of Christ for the Nations Institute. Students from 126 countries. Nobody saw me. Wow, wow. Oh, not even seen me. Nobody told me you're beautiful. Hi, I was that African girl who cleaned toilets. Talk of chastisement. I'm telling you. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. God needs to bring you holy. Holiness. To me, this day's beauty is fading. It is useless. Because I, I tested what it means to be the most in high school, then in college to be the ugliest. And not, right now, I could care less about beauty. <laughs> because God, I went through proper chastisement. Amen? Some people are single because they are going through chastisement. God wants to present you holy and acceptable. Holiness. In what you're going through. So ask yourself, if you're, you believe, you're going through some sufferings that you're not understanding. You're going through some things you're not understanding. Oh my God, am I as a son, just oh, as a child, you're just unanichapa. That I may understand, that I may fully understand what this is in your holiness. Amen? Most of it I, I have found. Number one, God chastises us in money. In money, people are not faithful. You're not faithful. The Bible says if you're not faithful in little, how shall you be given much? You test a little money, bah, you've disappeared. You're given a, God wants to save you from you. He's saving you from yourself. You're given money, all of a sudden the mabati is too hot. This, I, oh my goodness, I didn't realize this iron sheet. Hi. Some people only sit in here because they don't have money. The moment you have money, the moment you had an, a job that was calling you this Sunday morning, you wouldn't be here. So God is even saving you from yourself. He's saving you from yourself. Because he wants to present you holy. Holy. But once we understand how to treat money, the unrighteous mammon, once we understand that money cannot rob us from the love of God, once we know money means nothing to us, what is his is his, we give him, this is yours, this is tight, this is offering, this is for building the house, this is for an extra, an extra. Once God has tested you beyond that and you pass, you, then he will give you much. Then he will give you much. If you can't tithe 10,000, how will you be given 1 million? 
If you can't tithe 100,000, you look at the 10,000 like, this 10,000 is so much money. When you get 1 million, I'm telling you, 100,000 will be impossible. Impossible. Completely impossible to give. Another thing, God just as it with the pride of life. Pride of life. These things we keep accumulating. You're so prideful. But the key, the key is just here 24 hours. <laughs> pride, pride of life. Like, wow, okay, Ulinunu Agari, and then, okay, you bought a car. How sh- <laughs> right? They are talking to you, their keys just here. Pride of life, pride of life. You will go through some chastisement in that area. Last of the flesh, your body. I've told you how in, I spent three years in America with not a single boy asking me. In fact, I think if they asked me, I would have married there and I would have stayed there. As you have seen, I like international men. <laughs> <laughs> but God needed to present to me holy to be here. <laughs> holy. The last of the flesh. Last of the flesh. You'll go through some chastisement. Sin has consequences. God wants us to be holy and righteous. Verse 11 says, Now no chastening for the present seem to be joyous, so it will not be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit. Ah, so look afterwards. Now, afterwards, after you've gone through the chastisement, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So you, you go through holiness and righteousness. You begin producing a fruit of righteousness unto God. Which brings me to the last point. Number three. So God loves you, number one. I say, you are what? You are loved. And then you are chastened. This is our father. This is our father. What our father does to us. We are manifesting. We are doing what? We are going to manifest. Let's go around to Matthew chapter 7 verse 9. Because we must manifest into the sons of God properly. How shall we manifest if we do not understand what our father does to his children? Matthew 7, verse 9, which brings us to the theme of the week. Oh, what man is there of you whom, of, if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things are several do unto men, Uh Uh-uh, this is not the one I'm looking for. If you ask really, if then be no one. How much more shall the Father which is now give give gifts into that ask him? Which brings us to the Father gives us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Father gives us the Holy Spirit. Pastor, so look for me that scripture that I'm looking for. The Holy Spirit. The Father wants to give us good gifts. He, and the gift he's given us is the Holy Spirit. He gave us his son. Luke 11, verse, chapter. Luke eleven thirteen. Luke eleven thirteen. Thank you. Marry somebody who can sharpen you. If ye then be evil, now to give good gifts unto your children, how much more, yes, shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So if we who are evil, if us, our fathers, give us good things, our fathers paid our school fees, they sold their cows and brought you up, they did everything, they worked hard, your father did great things for you, and yet God calls us your evil, he's giving you good things, how much more shall your heavenly father, and he's saying the good thing that he's giving you is the Holy Spirit, This is the greatest gift we must come to understand that the Father can give us. is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Christ, when he was ascending, he said, I'm going. So you're seeing me here in person. So many people wonder. I wonder how it was to be in time when Christ was on earth. I hold him. And no, we have much better. We have the Holy Spirit. We are with him 24 hours. He says, I'm living. I'm sending you what? 
a comforter. I'm sending you the what? A ho the Holy Spirit. So the Father is the one who gives us the Spirit. He loves you so much. Remember, He loves you. He's just in you. And now He wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit that you may go through life. The Holy Spirit is the most essential thing the whole the believer must have. Is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. This is a Holy Spirit Sunday. So we must reach a place where we desire and thirst. for the. You know the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will not force himself on you. He will not force himself on you. Oh, you are receiving. Oh, has is you are walking one day. You know the Holy Spirit. I I read this book, uh, Good Morning Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn. That book changed my life. It changed my life to realize how you can get the Holy Spirit as a friend. To understand how you can be with the Holy Spirit at all times, wherever you are. When you know when it says pray without ceasing. It's hard to pray without season if you're just talking. But if you're speaking in tongues, you will find yourself praying without season. At all times, your mouth will just be shut. I don't know if you see our pastors. If you find them walking, they're not just quiet. They're shut. I love them. <laughs> it's wonderful. Pray without season. We must pray without season. We must have the Holy Spirit. We must desire the Holy Spirit. So the Father desires to see us filled. He desires to see us filled. Filled. Constantly filled. Remaining filled. Remaining filled. Meaning there's a constant pouring. There's a constant oil pouring. Pouring on you constantly. Every day. Not just once. Not, oh, it's Holy Spirit Sunday. Yeah, Holy Spirit Sunday. You come, you're filled. Tomorrow you continue with your life, yeah, Tuesday. Sunday you come back, yeah, Holy Spirit. Uh, no, and yet that's how some of us are living. Constant pouring, Lord, fill me more. I need your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit becomes a friend. He becomes part of your life. That if you're not in the presence of the Holy Spirit, you can feel it. If you enter an environment that the Holy Spirit hates, you quickly, that grieves him. You quickly get out. And you, and you, yeah, even if it is jam, even if I have to walk to home, let me just get out. Because your spirit is grieved. The Holy Spirit is grieved. You enter a place, oh, you had gone for a party for cousins and they were not saved. Ah, you people, I love you, but I can't stay here. Because you're filled with the Holy Spirit and a constant pouring. So God loves you so much. Our Father, God the Father loves you so much that he desires to see you have a constant helper, a constant comforter. You know, when my father died in 2020, I didn't know how much I needed a reminder of him anyway. And so you see this watch. That's my father's watch. So I like, you know, it's just, it, by the way, it's dead. It's not working. I need to fix it. But it just reminds me of my father, you know. He, he used to wear it on Sundays also. So I just see it, you know. I feel like I have my father with me. Yet Holy Spirit is why the Holy God needs you to know that he's with you. At all times. You see this watch, I'll remove it. Tomorrow, Monday, and I'm dropping my kids, you will not see it. I only remember when I'm dressed smart. And then so I don't have my father. I don't, I'm not working with him. But yet God the Father wants you to constantly have a mind of him. He constantly wants you to have a companion of him. Which is him. With you. In form of the Holy Spirit. May we get the revelation of God our Father. God our Father. He's Father to the fatherless. I'm currently fatherless. Yet God the Father is constantly there. Constantly there. Understanding that God loves us. Understanding that we must go through the chastisement. Every suffering and circumstance we go through is not wasted. God wants to bring righteousness and holiness out of me. He's pressing me like a toothpaste. When you press toothpaste, when you press it, what comes out is toothpaste. But some of you, when you're pressed, what comes out? Filth and righteousness. You'll be pressed until toothpaste is okay. Until toothpaste comes out. You'll be pressed until holiness and righteousness comes out. Not the filth that comes out. 
not going through circumstances and all of a sudden you throw your hands, God doesn't love me. You know, even this Christianity, is, it, uh, <laughs> you, throw, you give up. You give up. We must understand God's love, God's chastisement, and God's gift to us, which is the Holy Spirit, being filled constantly, constantly. May we desire to constantly be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you are our Heavenly Father who loves us. You are our Heavenly Father who is always with us. And God, we pray, God, even as we go through life, may you continue to show us your will. May we be filled with the knowledge of your will. May we be filled with your Holy Spirit. May we understand everything that we go through. And may we come out perfect and manifest as the sons of God. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. Happy.